Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kamanova Yoga, I'm Ali and today we're doing a coffee cup for beginners class called Afogato. I figured I'll keep that class for the beginner schedule because it's coffee with ice cream, it's a little lighter. I'll still give you um, enough work, enough uh, challenge, but at the same time it will be beginner friendly and um, advanced practitioners as usual can do this on their light day. I want to focus today on some um, themes uh, that were brought up to my attention as a kind of like a request or a need class. So we're gonna strengthen the back and open the chest throughout some of the poses and also work on some uh, spine uh, spinal adjustment. So remember to flow with strength and ease. <laughs> All right, starting feet a little wider than hip width apart and we're gonna begin to swing the arms side to side using momentum. Without resistance, you allow your arms to almost adjust your spine and shoulders by the free movement. Keep the chest open, of course, and begin to deepen the breath. and just feel the movement, the momentum as an adjustment. Follow with your gaze because with spinal adjustments you always want to include the entire spine from the tailbone perineum to, to the neck. Great, now we're gonna do reaching side bends and then opposite side. So I want you to really focus on the feeling of the hips. Feet forward, parallel to each other and you're going to slightly extend the tailbone. So we're not over tucking. There is always a lot of confusion with the tucking, uh, but extending, I think it's a good word so that we're in a neutral spinal alignment, but at the same time, we're isolating the uh, obliques and we're connecting the core. So nothing over, overdone, just a little bit of steadiness in the hips so that we can get into the sauce. That's how I feel it in my body. When we extend a little bit uh, in the back, we get a little better in some of the muscles that we're targeting to stretch and change. Experiment with your hips, uh, the sensations there, and you'll see difference in how they stretch depending on how you connect and align the hips. One more. One last. Reach over the head. And we're going to bring the right hand back and around onto the right leg. Look back. So the right arm all the way either to the right leg or if you can wrap it all the way on the left hip. However, as, as far into the twist as you can go. And opposite side, left arm back and around. Bring it down somewhere onto the left or right leg and look over the shoulder and really elongate through the fingertips. Beautiful, reach up and feel your feet sinking through the ground as you reach up into the sky. Exhale, folding. Shake your head, you can keep your knees bent here in a forward bend. Give it a good feel, feeling the neck, looking to the left, to the right, to just toss the tension out of your head intentionally. So create an intention as if you're just letting the tension, stiffness, um, extra build up out of the muscles and the nooks and crannies of the neck. Great, halfway up, chest parallel to the floor. We're going to go for a stomach vacuum because that helps with adjusting the spine as well. Exhale and hollow the belly and pull Mula Bandha in, so the Kegel muscle, or as if you're holding in to pee, not to pee. Empty. Thank you. 
and release. Reach over the head, hinging at the hips. Forward fold, you can keep your knees bent if it helps you with flexibility. Great, look ahead of you. Pull the belly in, really lengthen the spine here. If you bring your hands on the ground, you can bend your knees so they can reach this far or onto your shin bones. You can, especially with the floor, you can feel a little bit of a, the fingers really wrapping the mat and allowing the spine to extend forward and the belly to pull in. Great, plank. Always feel free to adjust your plank to your knees but really squeeze the belly as hard as you can either way. Now we want to bring the chest between the shoulders. So if you're somewhere here, you're gonna lower down as if your heart is between the shoulders. Metaphor. Shoulders away from the ears. Push your heels away from you if you're on your feet. Pull the belly in either way. and lower down, inhale, cobra, elbows in, exhale, down dog, breathe, deep, beautiful breaths, Look under one shoulder and under the other. Soften the gaze, soften the jaw. Inhale the right leg up, step it through and come up into high lunge. Focus on the breath. With each movement, you really wanna be connected to your breath and create a practice of awareness of the breath. So you're gonna push your left heel away from you and you're going to bring your elbows out, arms bent at the elbows, and you're gonna hinge at the hips. I want you to think robot doll moves. So you're not just leaning forward here in any way, but you're gonna hinge about 45 degrees or 60, something like that, whatever is comfortable for, for you. Push into the back heel, and we're going to bring the arms in front of us and open. Let me back up a little here belly in and when you open really flex your back muscles you can always add ankle weights to your arms here but for first class just do it with your own muscle contractions isometric so you're flexing three four five six seven eight nine, ten, great. Here, you're gonna keep leaning forward and stagger the knees a little bit. Push the hips back, so this is stagger squat a little. Maybe a first one for the beginner schedule, but it really targets the booty and the hamstrings. And we're gonna lower and come up. One, push the hips back. Two, really robotic hinged forward. Sorry for the over explanation. You get it over time, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Lower the hands down. You can do chaturanga from the knees or not. Up dog or cobra. Optional for the strong yogis. Second chaturanga from the knees or not. And down dog. Inhale the left leg up, step it through, straight back, come up, high lunge, feel the strength of your alignment, position, feet, legs, and open the elbows out, lean forward, we're gonna close and open, one, two, three, really flex the back muscles, straight back, five, Six, seven, flex, eight, nine, ten. Great, hands on the hips, stagger. So the hips are square with the front edge of your mat. You're level, you're not twisted here. You try to square, 
push the hips back, knee back. We're gonna lower, that's a stagger squat. Sometimes I like to call it staggered lunge because it does look like lunge. And you're gonna lean forward. That robotic lean, isolating the glutes. It will give you a perky booty. Three, again works <laughs> well for the spine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Great, this time we're gonna step at the front and we'll continue with the posture work but booty focus. Step onto the left leg, open the right knee out ballerina style. You can assume the position and we're going to lift back. One, so the diagonal knee out and you're gonna squeeze your booty. Two, three, four, you can hold if you need to but balance Work on your balance. Six, seven, squeeze the body. Eight, nine, 10. And now straight back. So push through the heel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Opposite side, open the knee. Work on your balance. Look at something immovable, <laughs> object, and just stay there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Straight back. You can hold onto a wall if you need to. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, great. <sighs> Open the chest, look up, palms of the hands facing each other and up. Great, exhale the hands down now. Inhale, look ahead, plank. Again, plank and chaturanga and um, up dog or cobra of your choice. In other words, this is vinyasa, and it can be done in any way. Beginner, advanced. It's a transitional pose that gives the spine a nice up and down flexion, extension, movement. Down dog. Breathe, focus on the breath, go back into the breath, inward. Inward attention. Drop the knees down onto the ground, and we're going to bring the right knee towards the nose, rounding the back, pulling the belly in, and then press the heel up, arch. So it's kind of like cat cow, but with the knee twist or the knee addition. One, two, really feel the spine. Three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Really squeeze everything. Booty, core, feel the spine. Opposite side. Really focus on the moves, focus on how they feel, focus on flexing the muscles, feeling the muscles and so forth. When the knee comes in, pull the belly in. When the heel goes back, flex the booty and arch the spine. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Five push ups. I want the very, very new to the yoga classes students to build upper body strength and 
chest strength as well. So one, align, pull the belly in, straight back. Two, three, four, five. Great, time for down dog. Spread the fingers open and really feel the strength in your hands, in your wrists, everything building from the foundation of the hands up into the forearms and shoulders and back. Inhale the right leg up and step it through, high lunge. Exhale the hands behind you, interlacing the fingers. You can pause here and grab a towel if this is difficult and hold the towel. The point is to feel the gentle opening of the chest here and look up, walking the hands or the towel down the left leg. Great, humble warrior. So here we're gonna lower the forehead down towards the ankle and press the back foot away from us for balance. Press the hands away from your back for opening the chest, adjusting the spine. release and vinyas up dog down dog take the left leg up step it high lunge exhale clasp behind then Change the clasp with the dominant finger under this time so that we can even it out. And walk your hands or towel down the leg, look up and feel the opening of the chest, but also the stretch in the stomach, core, hips. And slowly at your pace, lower down into Humble Warrior, press into the back heel. Release, step it back, plank, hold plank. Here we're gonna do a full body exercise I like to add in the intermediate classes. So often step the right foot through and circle the right hand. You feel your back muscles working, you connect them consciously, you adjust in a twist, your legs are working, strengthening, release down and step it back, step the left leg and really use conscious movement here. Feel the back muscles activating the spine, finding new ways of moving. Beautiful. Change. Change. Focus on the feeling of the movement. Change. Feel the belly, change, change, and plank, and down dog. Breathe. Sophie snoring extra loud today. Nothing more soothing than a snoring dog. <laughs> All right, take the right leg up. Step it through, high lunge again. This time without leaning forward, you can Continue reaching up. Now, if you want to work on the shoulders, bring your arms just parallel to the floor. Push the shoulders back so the chest is open and we're gonna lower down and come up. One, two, this is working the shoulders. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
straight down without overlapping the knee forward to keep the knee back. <sighs> 10. And we'll add a little more. Take a pause the video if you need to and come back. But a few more here. So here we're gonna bend the knee, come up and open the right arm out and back and close it back forward. Two. I promise that it's gonna be somewhat challenging. Three. Four. Five. Adjusting the back. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10. Great. <sighs> Hands in prayer, lean forward, twist, and bring the elbow on the outside of the knee. If that's too challenging, you can bring your hand onto the knee rather than the elbow. Great. Vinyasa, plank, chaturanga, up dog. Chaturanga, maybe on the knees, maybe skip it. Down dog. Take the left leg up. Step it through. Straight back, high lunge. Again, you can reach forward, but push the chest open. Shoulders back. And let's go one, two. Keep the knees and hips back. Four. Straight down and up five, six, squeeze the booty, seven, eight, nine, ten, and now one, left arm, circle it back, two, the other one stays parallel to the floor, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hands in prayer, reach forward, twist. Press the back heel straight back and away from you. Beautiful. Come out, plank, knees on the ground. And here you can step your knees a little wider than hip width and begin to lower the chest towards the floor in a back bend. You can grab the front of the mat or claw the mat or the floor and lower down in a back bend, chin forward. Great, down dog. Plank, lay down onto the floor. And we're going to open the elbows on the side one more time at 90 degree. And we're gonna lift and lower down, strengthening the back. Two, three, Flex the back, four, five. Now for the next five, we're gonna come up, extend forward and bring back and release. Two, three, four, five. Now we're going to bring the left arm forward, right leg activated, and we're gonna lift diagonally and release. One, two, three, four, five, and change sides. One, two, three, four, 
three, four, five, and child's pose. It's a little forward bending reset. Palms of the hands facing each other so the shoulders relax. Sit down onto your booty. Legs in front of you, a little wider than hip width apart. And you will drop your knees to the left and you will look over the left shoulder so you will continue in the projection the directory direction of the knees and look over the left shoulder in a full twisting motion opposite side drop and then continue with the upper body really elongating here Feel the spine. Great, one more time. Drop to the left, move to the left and take the right arm up. It's a continuation of that. Elongating, adjusting movement. And let's change. And wanna add right here one more move so lay down onto your back and extend the left leg and the right arm the other ones can be just inactive either on the floor or however you want them and you're gonna diagonally stretch from the fingertips of the right hand to the toes on the left a diagonal stretch i find it really good for adjusting the hips and the spine really put effort into it imagine Two people are holding you for the ankle and the hand and stretching you gently. Not a jerking stretch, but just something that really feels good and elongates you and adjust the hips. All right, the other one. Stretch into the right foot, toes and left arm. Oh yes, feel, imagine two people are just giving you elongation. Beautiful. Now, Step your feet in hip width apart, Sh press your shoulders down, lift your arms up, press the arms up and the spine is neutral here and you're going to bring the hands over the head and bring them ba back up the entire time the shoulders are touching the floor. That again adjusts the hips. All right, now we'll We'll add a pelvic tilt and an arm reach. Come back up, release. Pelvic tilt, arms reaching. Come back up. The next one, give it a little bit of a stomach vacuum. Pelvic tilt, arms reaching, pull Mulabanda in. Stomach vacuum, let's do one more. Pelvic tilt. Beautiful. Release the arms just for a moment to give them a break. Take bridge pose now. Feet pointing directly forward. Drop the shoulders down. And again, reach up. You can bring the palms of the hands together. Same thing, reach up and come back up. So over the head and up towards the ceiling the entire time the shoulders are on the ground they're touching the floor they're not floating around yes a few more great and now release the arms down on the floor and just gently drop your head to the left and to the right without forcing it just an adjustment one side and then the other Great. Now press your elbows down to help with the bridge. I'm going to a much deeper bridge. So we're opening the chest here, chest towards the chin. Pressing into all four corners of each foot. 
arches of the feet lifting, booty working, strengthening the back, opening the chest. Give it a really nice back bend here. You can help a little with your hands on the glutes to lift a little more. Breathe. Release. Take a moment to catch your breath. And here we're gonna do a pelvic tilt. And take the right hip up, left hip up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and release you can give yourself a hug knees into the rib cage or towards it grab grab your feet or your ankles for happy baby and rock side to side plow if you can it's not always for every beginner so if you can do plow just soles of the feet together and lay here if you can do plow, highly recommend it. It's amazing. It really, there is no pose like it for adjusting the spine, the neck in an inverted pose, creating space in the spine. Really good for scoliosis. It just takes the spine out of the habitual misalignment. Shoulder stand. Release. Down. And extend your legs. You're gonna bring your hands underneath your booty. Elbows down and pop the chest open. Top of the head towards the floor. It doesn't have to be on the floor. Don't jam uh, the neck. Keep your weight onto your elbows. Open the chest as if you're beaming a light through the heart. Heart opener here, hold it. And lay down and just take a break. Feeling the chest opening, the integrity of the back, the spine the hips, scanning the body. And if you feel something off, something is not feeling right, bring a lot of crystalline light in that area as if you're bathing yourself with light and seeing the dustiness, the fogginess, the mugginess, leaving the body and draining into the earth to be transformed into the earth. The earth is the great transformer. So we're letting go of stagnation and pain and misalignment and bathing those areas in light, in crystalline light. Allowing the breath to be easy the feeling, the flow in the body to be natural, unobstructed. Allowing the mind to just tune into the present moment through the five senses and beyond by just experiencing the moment, but in its expansion. So feeling the moment multidimensionally beyond beyond just the narrow tunnel view of the moment, but just the expansiveness of this moment, of this timelessness. It's 
stay here for a little longer, just feeling the moment, being here and now, present, filled with gratitude for everything, not just for the good stuff, but for everything. As anything is a possibility, an opportunity for expansion and growth, and sometimes challenges are our guides. So we shift our perspective and we propel towards the future or towards what we're creating via gratitude. Gratitude shifts how we see the present. We begin to see it as a blessing and thus we create more blessings. What we see, that's what we create, the law of mirrors. So see everything in your life, good and what you would stamp as bad. All of it, view it from the prism of gratitude. And from that gratitude, create a blessed life. Namaste.
Thank mm-hmm. you.